New year, new me. I'm gonna eat healthy this year. Hmm. Oh, this kale looks healthy enough. Hmm. All right. I told myself I'm gonna do it. It's a nice big piece. Hmm. Not what I was expecting. Kind of, kind of reminds me of of grass. Hmm. Oh well. All right. Day two. We're not going for the kale. How about some fruit? Fruity pebbles? Man, there's gotta be some type of fruit in there. Oh, this tastes so much better than the kale. What a relief. Man, I'm hungry. I missed breakfast today. Ooh. Hmm, Krispy Kremes. Man, lead me not into temptation. All right, here we go. I think I'm gonna have one dozen donuts today. Well, I tried eating healthy. <laughs> There's always next year. Can anybody relate to the video? Everybody good? <laughs> All right. Let me ask the ushers to come down and help us with the uh, giving of tithes and offerings. And while they're coming, let me remind you that we, uh, we, uh, we gave away the offering. We're giving away the offering from New Year's Eve. You remember? And I'm sorry, from Christmas Eve. You remember that, right? Okay. So uh, here's the deal. Over our campuses, you guys are awesome. So over Christmas Eve weekend, you gave $100,000. So that was an awesome, 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 awesome weekend. So what we're able to do is we're able to do startup funds. The majority of that money is going to startup funds for, uh, for our Revive Church, which Pastor Grayland is going to be leading in Waldorf, and for our, the church that Pastor Jervy is going to be planting in, um, in Gaines. I'm sorry, Pastor Jervy's in Gaines. Y'all, let me pause. This is why I'm confused. This is why I'm a little distracted. Our church in Gainesville this morning, um, I guess the gas company forgot to fill up the propane. And there's no heat there today. And so uh, they literally, they're probably joining us online right now. So if you're from Gainesville and you're joining us online, dude, I'm sorry. I, we thought, we paid to bill. I'm just telling you, <laughs> we paid to bill. But, uh, but so they are, they are not able to have church this morning uh, because it's so, you can imagine, it's one degree, one. <laughs> just any, whoever's praying for cold weather. I got two things for you. Number one, stop it. <laughs> Number two, you are in charge of our prayer ministry did from today forward. All right, so <laughs> I'm firing whoever else is there. But at any rate, um, so uh, at any rate, uh, but Pastor Jervie's gonna be pa gonna be planting a church down in uh, Galveston County, and so the vast majority will go there. We'll also be able to invest in uh, Wesleyan pastors from across the eastern half of the United States, uh, training them in in multiplication, training and encouraging them in multiplication and church growth. And we're going to be able to invest in pastors across the continent of Australia uh, by training and encouraging them to plant churches to grow. So literally, you're gonna reach around the world. So it's awesome. It's awesome. So thank you for your faithfulness and thank you for the way that you continue to give. Let me pray with us. Father God, I pray that you would continue to make us a faithful people, a generous people. Thank you for the ability, the capacity, and the desire to be generous. Help us to continue to be so. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. You guys can go ahead. Um, now, 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 let's say, First of all, seriously, thank you for being here at nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning when it was one, one, one degree. Uh, it said three degrees uh, on my uh, thermostat at home, on my, uh, on, my, um, on my thermometer at home, but it said one in the car driving up here. So I don't know which. All I know is that stupid cold. It is not of God. <laughs> this is sin run amok in the world. I just want you to know that, all right, okay? Because God, if you do not know my theology of cold and snow, you see me afterwards. It is not, we were not built for it. We weren't built for sin, sorrow, sickness, or snow. None of those things, all right? God made us for better than that. So uh, here's what I want us to do this year. It's, 20, it's 2018 now, so happy new year. Happy new year. <clears throat> here's what I want us to do this year. I want us to start out the year 
by truly digging and reaching for more in our Christian life. We're going we're gonna to spend three weeks in, in Galatians chapter 5. And as we spend three weeks in Galatians chapter 5, what we're going to be talking about is finding freedom at a much deeper and a much greater level. And so what I want us to do is I want to see us as a church. Look, can I say this? I want to see us as individual Christians grow beyond where we've ever been and perhaps grow beyond what we ever thought was possible for us as individuals. But in order to do that, we're going to have to find freedom. And in order to truly find freedom in our lives from the things that hold us back, we're going to have to be surrendered to God because we do not teach a doctrine of victory. We teach a doctrine of surrender. If we taught a doctrine of victory, you would believe that there's something you need to do to defeat all the enemies in your life. You would believe that it's your job to defeat them. That makes it all about you. This is not a doctrine of victory. We are teaching a doctrine of surrender, surrender to the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. He is the one that will defeat the enemies. He is the one that will defeat those that hold you back. He is the one that will set you free. But he will do that as you surrender to him, not as you get better at your religious practice. Everybody's got it? So, so, so we're going we're gonna to look in a section of scripture today, Galatians. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. Paper Bibles, digital Bibles, whatever you've got, go ahead and turn there. And, and go to Galatians chapter 5. And what we're going to look at is a section of scripture where the Apostle Paul, who is the author of, of Galatians, where the Apostle Paul is writing to the church and he begins to speak to us about the, about the disposition between a religious practice and a truly surrendered life, okay? So, so let me show you this. If he, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five and verse one. It is for freedom, somebody say freedom. freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. I'm gonna read that again. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Let's start right off here. Let's fill out the first blank. Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free. That's what he did on the cross. That's what he did in the empty tomb. That's what he did on the day of Pentecost. Christ has set us free. He has come to set us free. And, and, and when I say that, what you are hearing is Christ has set me free from my sin. And that is true. That is true. Somebody say amen. Christ has set us free from our sin. He paid the price. We're free from our sin. And it clearly says, the Apostle Paul says, do not be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. What was the yoke of slavery? Our old yoke of slavery was sin. All right, but let me keep reading because there's more to it than that. There's more to this freedom than that. Now, now let, me, let me just say, as we read through this, the Apostle Paul is going to be talking about religious practice. As we read through this, we are going to repeat the word circumcision over and over again. We're going to talk about circumcision today. All right. So look at your neighbor and say, well, this is awkward. Tell them that. All right. So, so, so the truth is we're going to go through this a lot today. He's going to say it a lot. Here's what I need you to hear when we talk about that. He's talking about a religious practice done by humans to humans that are supposed to mark humans as followers of God, okay? Now, what Paul is gonna come against is the fact that you can humanly do anything that actually makes you a child of God. It's not true. And so what Paul is gonna do is come against that. And there are very good reasons I could go through all of that historically as to why Paul is coming against this. There's theological reasons, there's societal, there's societal reasons, and there's, and there's theological reasons. I go through, I'm not gonna go through all that. I want you to understand a simple truth that I'm going to show to you right now. So are you ready? Here we go. Here we go. Verse two. Mark my words. When Paul says that, you ought to pay attention, by the way. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Why would you say that? Watch. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. Now, let, let me just keep going. Let me keep going. Watch. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated for Christ. You have fallen away from grace. 
Now, let me explain. When, when, when someone goes back in the first century, when Paul's writing this, when someone goes back to Judea, Jewish practice and says, I'm going to go to the Old Testament practice of circumcision. And by doing that, I'm going to prove that I'm a child of God. What they are saying is, I'm going to go back to the law and try to earn my salvation through the law. I'm going to try to earn my salvation by being so good at the religion that God has to forgive me. Everybody listen. You can never be so good that God is obligated to forgive you. You need to know that. And if you believe that's possible, then you have alienated yourself from Christ. Then you, then, and, and if you have alienated yourself from Christ, then the cross is of no value to you. What you are really saying, if you believe that through religious practice, you can find salvation, you are really saying that Jesus died in vain. He didn't have to go to that cross because you were good enough to do it by yourself. You see what's happening here. The Apostle Paul is clearly saying the Old Testament practice, the old ways are now gone. You cannot earn this salvation. It had to be given to you. It was beyond your capacity. And if you start to act like it's within your capacity, you actually insult the very sacrifice that was made for you. And you've got to stop doing that. Let's keep reading. Verse 5. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. Everybody hold on a minute. You are saved by faith. Okay? Look at your neighbor and say, you are saved by faith. Tell them that. Let's say it a little better. You ready? Look at your neighbor and say, you are saved by grace through faith. Tell them that. You see that, right? And that's true. It's faith in Christ and the grace that Jesus gave you that saves you. Here's what you got to understand. You are also sanctified by faith and by grace. It's not like I got to get saved by grace and then get really good at following the rules so I can be sanctified and holy. That's not how that works. Sanctified means set apart for holy use, all right? So, so that's, that's not how that works. It, both of these are faith issues. Both of these are grace issues. That's what I mean when I say to you, this is not a doctrine of victory. It is a doctrine of surrender. Because if it were a doctrine of surrender, if, if, if it were a doctor of victory, then what I would say to you is this: get the blood of Jesus to wash you clean, and then and then get really good at being a religious person. But that's not what I'm saying to you. I'm saying get the blood of Jesus to wash you clean and then get really surrendered to the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because it's faith and it's grace that does both. Okay, let me keep reading because some of you are getting lost. I'm, I'm going to get you there. I'm going to get you there. You get, this is going to make sense. Come on, come on, stay with me. All right. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You see this? You, you, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Y'all remember, y'all remember the day you got saved? How many, I mean, don't, don't raise your hand, but you remember the day you got saved? It, the day you got saved, the God forgave you and you felt so light, you felt like you could float out of the building. It was awesome. It was like, whoa, so great. But, but in most cases, especially if you're a holiness person, you didn't make it out the back door till somebody hung something on you to weigh you down again. Right, because what they did was they said, "You need whoa, whoa, you're saved. You're, I'm, oh, oh, pray, praise God, you got. I'm glad you got saved." And then they said, "But next week you need to wear a different outfit. Somewhere between here and next Sunday, why don't you get a haircut, sir? Somewhere between here and next Sunday, why don't, uh, sweetheart, you need you need a different dress." Hey, by next Sunday, can you wear a shirt that covers all up all them tattoos? Y'all, in the old days, those things happened. And when I first started in ministry, not that long ago, 30 years, but not that long ago, <laughs> there were still some churches that believed that women shouldn't, well, there were still some Western churches that believed that women shouldn't put on any makeup. And if you were putting on, oh, you Jezebel. <laughs> Y'all, if the barn needs painting, paint the barn. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> If only we had that option for some of the men. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that is going out on the interwebs. Um, all right. Did y'all hear what I'm saying, right? I mean, look, none of that matters. None of that matters. What? Let me show you something. Let me show you. Let me fill this out. God, Christ has set us free. Say that. Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free. Watch. From slavery, that's our slavery to sin, and from self-righteousness. See, there's both. What happens is before you found Christ, you were a slave to sin. But what happens in far too many cases is after you find Christ, you just get a new master and your new master is religion. But religion is not going to save you. Self-righteousness is not going to save you. That's what the apostle is saying here as he continues to talk. He, say, he says, look, well, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you? to keep you from obeying the truth. That kind of person, that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. It's very interesting right there. When he uses the word yeast, do you understand that, that in, in scripture, the word yeast is often used to describe sin. And he's now using this word yeast to describe self-righteousness. He's using this word yeast to describe religious practice that you think will do something for you that only grace and faith can do. He now uses the same word he uses for sin. I am confident, verse 10, I'm confident in the Lord that you, you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into, co into confusion, whoever that might be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I'm still preaching circumcision or if I'm still preaching religion, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, pause. Those of you who think I'm harsh when I preach, I want you to know that at least the apostle Paul's not your pastor. <laughs> As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. <laughs> See, if I did that in here, y'all be writing me emails. The that's, did you, how many, come on, that's in the Bible. Y'all didn't even know that, all right? So look, we've got, Christ has set us free from slavery and self-righteousness. Now, now watch, verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Okay, Christ set us free, and he set us free from slavery and self-righteousness. Now watch. Christ not only set us free, Christ set us apart. He made us different. You say, well, why, why, why can't I just be like the rest of the world? Because you're not like the rest of the world. Well, what do you mean I'm not like the rest of the world? The rest of the world is following sin and destruction. You are following salvation in Christ. The rest of the world is running this way, but you're going with Christ that way. You can't be like the rest of the world and be like Christ. The same. You cannot chase the world and Jesus at the same time. And so you, the, the truth is that Christ set us apart. Now watch, I want to show you something. We have been set free. Everybody listen. We've been set free from sin, not to sin. I want to give it to you again because I want you to hear me. We've been set free, free from sin, not to sin. You understand? Because, because some people think that since the blood of Jesus is on them, they can do anything they want. Now that I'm saved, I can act any way I want to. My, my actions have no bearing on my salvation. I didn't say that because some of you wanted to hear that when I'm preaching the first point. You thought to yourself, that's right, religion doesn't help. I just need the blood of Jesus and I do anything I want to. That's not what the apostle Paul said. He didn't say that. Your religious practice will not save you but your saving grace should change you. Everybody all right? So say this after me. Um, no, tell your neighbor. <laughs> tell your neighbor. You're free from sin, but not to sin. Everybody's got that? I want you to say it again. You're free from sin, but not to sin. You see what I'm saying, right? Everybody's tracking with this. There is a righteousness and a holiness that is required, 
But you are not chasing righteousness and holiness in order to get right with God. You are getting right with God so that God can start to work out inside of you a righteousness and a holiness. Okay, let me keep going. Keep going. It says here, back, verse 13 again. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Christ has set us free from slavery and self-righteousness. Christ has set us apart we're free from sin, but not to sin. And Christ has set us to work. I, I, I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me all the way out, because some of you are going to freak out when I say this. Jesus saved you. Everybody listen. But he did not save you. Everybody listen. He did not save you for you. He didn't. He saved you for you to serve others. So I don't like that. I, want, I just want Jesus to save me for me. No. He didn't save you for you. He saved you to serve others. Because we are the hands and feet of Christ. We are the presence of the Holy Spirit in this world. We are the tools that God is going to use to reach the world around us. That's why we've been set apart. We've been set apart so that we would be different and the world would see that and the world would pursue the Christ that is in us. But now we've been set to work. Well, why have, why have we been set to work? Because we are free from sin to serve in love. We are free from sin so that we can serve in love. You see that, right? We've got to, yo, yo, let, let me show you something. It, 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 let's just, you know, I don't believe that. I believe Jesus just saved me for me. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. God's smart. Can I get an amen? Let me see if y'all agree with me. God's smart, amen? amen? Okay, so God's smart. God would do what would accomplish his will the best, right? So if he's gonna save you for you, then when you come down and get saved, and you get down on your knees and you say, you say, Lord, 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 forgive me. I want to be your child. If he's saving you just to get you to heaven, then why the minute you get saved, didn't he just take you on? I mean, wouldn't that be an awesome altar call? You come down, you like, Lord, save me. And boom, you're gone. Nothing but clothes on the floor. <laughs> that would be effective. You see that somebody coming down and boom, clothes. Who's next? That would either work real well or real poorly. I don't know which, you know. I mean, but you see what I'm saying? If God was going to save you for you, he'd just go ahead and take it. But he leaves us here. Why? Because he's got work for us to do. Other people need to read the word. You need to hear the word. Let me just say something. If God took me the day I got saved, who's going to preach the word to you right now? You say, I'm glad you're left here, preacher. We need preachers. Well, tomorrow morning at work, you're the preacher. In your life, in your action, in your words. I don't mean you're going to to go to work and set yourself up at the front of the cubicle room and say, turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. <laughs> I don't mean that. But you are, the, you, are the, you are the preacher. You are the pastor. You're the one people hear from. You say, okay, 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 pastor. Well, what do you want me to do with this? I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked. I, I want to take you through. I want to take you through something. I, I, I believe... I believe that in our, in our spiritual walk, there's a process. And let me just tell you, I believe this process is played out in Scripture. Now, I've told you this many times before. Let me get that in there so I don't lose it. I believe this. I've, so, I've showed you this before. Your Bible is a journey for humankind from Eden, the Garden of Eden. No sin, no sorrow, no sickness, no death, and no snow. That place. <laughs> it's a journey from there all the way to Eden gained. This is Eden lost. Here is Eden gained because the journey is to a new heaven, new earth. So, so, so watch, that's the journey. It's humankind's journey. And all throughout the journey, all through all of this, 
God has been showing us himself, showing us his way, showing us his will, showing us his mind, showing us his heart all the way through all of this until we finally come to a place that we are capable of finding the forgiveness, the grace, the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit we need to make it to new heaven, new earth. You see that, right? It's a journey. Your life individually is a journey in the same way. And it starts the same way. Watch. We all start with a practiced faith. We start with a practiced faith. What this means is, watch. If you have a practiced faith, what you're saying is, I know the rules. And there's an awful lot of people out there that they know the rules of church and they know the rules of Christianity but they've never once really surrendered to the Holy Spirit and their lives are not growing and they're not finding, they're not finding freedom. They're not finding power in their spiritual walk. God wants you to have power in your spiritual walk, but that's not a victory phrase. That's a surrender phrase. Y'all with me? Yes. If you're going to find power in your spiritual walk, you got to get beyond a practice faith. What do you mean? When I practice faith, I find power. No. You know what? Can I just say, don't react and do not elbow your neighbor. All right, but, 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 but hear me, hear me. A lot of you have been in church your whole life. You know how to act in church. You know the right words to say. You know the right clothes to wear. You know how to fix your hair when you come in here. You know what to do. You know how to walk. You know when to show up. You know, when to, you know where to sit. You know when worship's going to start. You know when worship's going to end. You know how many songs you want to sing, so you only come in for the songs you want to sing. You know how long the sermon's supposed to be. And if I go too long, you get upset because the Holy Spirit possibly cannot go past 10 after. And you, you see what I'm saying? And you could come in here and you could convince all of us that you are a Christian because you know the rules. Now, you might be living like the devil Monday through Saturday, but you know how to put on the costume and do the act on Sunday. There's no power in that. There's no power in that. You know what? That is? That's nothing in the world but a game. Because what you're doing is you're looking for the edges so you can live right out on the edges. How close can I get to the edge without dropping into hell? But you're not finding any power. So you got to move forward. And the next step is an important one. It moves from a practice faith to a personal faith. This is where your faith goes from a religion to a relationship because when you get to a personal faith, you would say, I know, I really know Jesus. I know Jesus as my savior. See, some people, they know the rules and they know how to practice a faith, but they're not even saved yet. They don't even know Jesus as their savior, but they know the church. Y'all, did y'all know you could know church without knowing Jesus? I mean, I've been in church my whole life. I, I, I know what people expect. I know what people expect in different places. I can walk in the back door of a church, look at how people are dressed and hear the music they're singing and know what the rules are when I walk in. All right? Very simple. You, you, you can always do it because I've been in church my whole life. But look, that's just the rules. You got to know Jesus. You got to look at your neighbor and say, you got to know Jesus. Tell your neighbor that. You only find salvation and forgiveness through a relationship with Christ. You cannot find it in a practiced religion. You got to find it in a personal relationship. Now I'm going to freak you out. That's not enough. You say, oh, Bob, pre <gasps> how dare you? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You say, all I need is Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't freak out. And nobody, no, stay seated. <laughs> because let me tell you something. That's not what the Bible says. <laughs> It's not what the Bible says. Because what the Bible says is very simple. The Bible, watch. The Bible says that, that watch. It, it, Jesus died on a cross. Amen? Amen. He rose from the dead. Amen? Amen? But does the story stop there? No. no, it goes to Pentecost. And he sends the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a whole nother step to this thing. And if all you need is Jesus, then why did God send the Holy Spirit? Come on now. Right. See, we've been stopping here. We've been stopping here. All, all we want is enough of the blood of Jesus and we don't go to hell. But don't change my life. Don't make me weird. Don't make me a fanatic. But I'll wear all my team's clothes. Just don't make me act like Jesus. Y'all all right? 
We got to go beyond this. We got to move to a powerful faith. A powerful faith is beyond this. A powerful faith takes more. You say, well, what, 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 what is it? A powerful faith says, I want to write. You see, I want to write I know because that fits my pattern. And I'm, I'm a preacher and I like patterns like that. I don't know if y'all ever noticed me using those patterns, but I do. That's not the right word. The right word is I follow the Spirit. And in order to follow the Spirit, I have to be surrendered to the Spirit. We've got to find power. We've got to find power from the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's what he's saying here. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. It's not the practiced religion that's going to get you there. It's following the Spirit of God so that you can be filled with the power of God so that you can actually serve. It's not just finding enough of Jesus to keep you out of hell. Watch, watch, watch. Some of y'all, some of y'all, watch. So, some of you won't get past here. And, and I, get, I don't want anybody to get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. I'm not picking on you. If the shoe fits, put it on a home. Don't let us know here. But, 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 but I want you to hear some of you, are, some of you are like, you go to church to get your sacrifice on. And then you go out in the world Monday through Friday and get your sin on. And then run back to church on Sunday to get you another sacrifice on. That's the way way too many Christians are living. They're not asking the Holy Spirit to make them different on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They're just asking Jesus to clean them up from the week when they show up on Sunday. That's not what God has for you. There's no power in that. Say, yeah, but will he get me to heaven? <sighs> maybe. I mean, I, I, I could give you a profound theological maybe. I mean, you, you hear what I'm saying, right? Well, the blood of Jesus is that weak. No, you are. I'm sorry. Oh. Let's go back to the makeup conversation. <laughs> Stop coming to church just to get your grace on. You realize if you just come to church to get your sacrifice on, so you can go out in the world and get your sin on, and come back and get your sacrifice on, you're living in the Old Testament. You're just coming to church every week to sacrifice another lamb. And that's not what God sent the Holy Spirit for. It's time for us to find a powerful faith. It's time for us to actually live in the New Testament. It's time for us to actually be changed by the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Pray with me. Father God, in this moment, I ask you to Settle our minds. Bar from this place everything that would distract our thinking. Holy Spirit, speak to us very clearly. Let us hear your voice. Let us hear your call. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would help us to take a journey today. For anyone that's in this room that is just practicing a religion because they know the rules, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would set us free from that practice. I pray that you would give us a relationship with the Jesus who, who will forgive us and deliver us from our sin. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. You say, Pastor, that's me today. I, I, I need to move from a religion that I know to a relationship with Jesus. I want you to pray with me, and you can pray silently right where you're sitting, okay? You don't have to get up. You don't have to move around. I'm not going to do anything like that. I just, I, just want you, I just want you to do business with God. Just pray this quietly right where you are. Dear Jesus, I know I've messed up. I know I'm a sinner. Wash me clean. Forgive me. Make me yours. Make me like you. Oh, Lord, I just pray right now that you would just bring forgiveness into the lives of anybody that's praying that prayer. Let them sense your presence. Let them know that you're there. Let them know that you're part of, what, uh, 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 of this moment. Let them know that something in the spiritual realm has changed right now. But Holy Spirit, I ask that you would take us a step further. I pray that you'd take us to the next place. Lift us up to a place where the Holy Spirit begins to empower us. Let us surrender to your spirit in such a way that we might actually find freedom. 
that we might have actually find a powerful faith, that we might actually find the strength to live differently Monday through Saturday and not just come to church to find another sacrifice. But let us be changed on a day-to-day basis. Let us be like you. If that's you today and you need to pray this prayer, I want you to pray with me silently right where you're sitting. Pray these words with me. Say, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. I surrender to your power. I surrender to your presence. I surrender to your call. I surrender to your guidance. Help me live differently from today forward. Help me be changed. Help me be surrounded by the, by the arms of the Father. Help me be lifted up. Help me live like a child of God. Take us on in 2018 on a journey of finding a powerful faith. Lord, let us quit just playing out the act. Let us quit just following the rules and let us actually be changed. You are our God and we will follow you. Let us be surrendered to you. Let us be yours. We give you praise. Father, I thank you this morning for everyone here that had a spiritual breakthrough. Lord, I believe in them. They happen. Lord, when we surrender to you, it happens. There was a day when you saved me, when you turned my life around. And there was a day when I surrendered everything to you about a year and a half later. Hey, I enjoyed salvation, but I came to a time. There was a time when I got God. But thank God there was a time when you got me. And Lord, hang on and use us and help us to have breakthroughs many times in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen.